p.m. in Alloway, Robert Burns' birthplace. The house that Robert Burns lived in was built by his father, William Barnes. Robert Burns was born on the 25th of January, 1759. The family initially lived here, but as times were hard, they had to move to Mount Oliphant Farm. Now it was there that Burns fell in love with Nellie Kirkpatrick, which inspired his first attempts at poetry. Oh. Education was important to Robert Burns' father, and so he made sure that he taught him everything that he could, even from an early age. And then, after he taught him everything he knew, he sent him off to John Murdoch, um, who taught him Latin, French, and mathematics. This is a Turbolton Bachelors Club. Rabbi Burns was a member. He was also elected president and helped write the rules and regulations for members. Um, he learned to debate and Scottish country dance here, much to his father's disapproval. Now it was also here in 1781 that Robert Burns was initiated into the Masonic Lodge of St David's. My favourite Burns poem is Tam O'Shanter. Now you can imagine the scene yourself. You've gone out for a few pints with your mates, you've had a few too many and it hits that time when you know it's time to go home. So you go out, for us we'd be catching a bus, but for poor old Tam, had to go get Meg his horse and sort of make his way along the road home. But as he's going along, he comes across the kirk. And in the kirk, the devil's playing the bagpipes, and witches and warlocks are dancing away. And he's captivated by, the, by this image, and he's watching it, and he's had a few, so mind that. And he's like, ah! So he's watching it, he's like, ah, gang yourself! And all the witches and warlocks turn round and they see him looking at them and they start making after them. Like, Tam, what the hell did I do? So then he, hit, he hits poor old Meg and he gets going and it's on this bridge that one of the witches comes along and rips right off poor old Meg's tail. Now, the lesson to be learned are two. First, if you believe Tam, be careful of witches and warlocks and all things mystical. And if you didn't, well, the lesson is, be careful when you're drinking ale, because good ale doesn't make for good decisions. Robert Burns famously said his love was like a red, red rose, and he certainly had a number of loves lost in one over the years. Now, as a result of some of those relationships, he had 12 children. The first was when he was at the tender age of 17 to his mother's servant, Elizabeth Payton. Now, when trying to be persuaded to marry the poor girl, he said that he simply couldn't marry her as he did not love her. But within the year, he did meet the love of his life, Jean Armour. Now, he met Jean and he started the relationship. Now, as a result of that relationship, she has got, got pregnant. Now, Burns actually did want to marry Jean, but her father said no and sent her off to Paisley. Jean had been recalled back eh, to confirm that she was pregnant and to proclaim who the father was. Now, in the meantime, Robert, believing that he'd been abandoned by Jean, tried to get back his bachelor status. Now, her father, not being happy with this, um, decided that he was going to petition the church elders uh, and put a warrant out for Burns' arrest. So eventually what happened was is Burns had to come back to here, Mocklin, uh, to stand in rebuke at the church at the Kirk. Now this would have entailed basically lots of sermons um, and him being called a fornicator uh, and just you know sin and hell and damnation be upon you and that. But after he'd done it for three Sundays, all was good. Robert Burns found great success. He managed to, get, managed to get his first set of papers published. Now these are called the Kilmarnock Papers. Now really, it should have, they sold out and it was a tremendous success. It really should have married a second printing of it. But the publisher was already busy printing religious material. So Robbie Burns' poems were not seen as that important. So it's around that time they came here to Edinburgh, near Lady Stairs Close, um, that he met William Creech. Now William Creech, published his um, second set of works known as Poems in the Scotch Dialect. Now, it was during that time in Edinburgh 
um, that he was a member of the higher echelons of Edinburgh society. And he was treated like an equal, which he wasn't necessarily treated back at home. But he was treated an equal here, and he was invited to all the parties and everything. Now, during that time, he actually met a young Walter Scott, who was at the age of 16 years old. But all this highfalutin wasn't meant to last. And he got a letter from his brother who said that Jean Armour had been thrown out by her father. Now, Jean Armour, love of Burns' life, so he had to go back. When he went back, this time, he married. Now, the reason for this is that due to Burns' higher stature as a renowned poet, her father eventually let him marry her. Now, that's where we'll find, you'll find me next week, down in Dumfries, where Burns moved with Jean Armour. So please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on it next week's episode of The Nation's Bard. I've been Alan. This has been Our History, Your Story. See you next time.